to increase the budgetary allocation for the Ministry of Foreign and Diaspora Affairs. We are grateful to our President, His Excellency William Ruto, as he continues to set pace as Kenya's chief diplomat by actively engaging in strategic diplomatic activities. Accordingly, accordingly, Kenya has been able to sign mutually beneficial agreements in order to expand trade opportunities for our people, diversify creative economy prospects, and secure labor mobility agreements to address youth unemployment. Further, our country has received more international scholarships seen and seen a rise in public-private partnerships that are sparring infrastructural development in Kenya and increased international engagements that flourish tourism and guarantee our peace and security, among others. Ladies and gentlemen, the ultimate goal of a country's foreign policy is to provide a blueprint and a strategy for achieving its national interests in line with the common good of the nation and shared prosperity. Therefore, the Kenya public has a frontline role in contributing to the formulation and implementation of foreign policy. This, I repeat, is the reason we are all gathered here today. Just as a reflection, what is the role of citizens in appreciating and promoting our country's national interests whenever our people interact with the international environment? How can we utilize our foreign policy to inculcate in our people patriotism and a fervent desire to positively project our country's image in the international arena? In short, we must close the missing link between the country's foreign policy and the citizens' understanding and engagement in our international affairs. In conclusion, I encourage you to have a candid discussion and an in-depth interrogation of the document to ensure that the final product of this foreign policy review process captures the perspectives and wishes of Kenyan citizens. Before I step off the podium, let me also appreciate uh, our partners, the UNHCR, Conrad, the Stockholm Environmental Institute, the Council of the New Global South, and the other that may not be on this list, but who have supported us in one way or the other, including uh, our ambassadors, Emeritus, who were part of this very, very important uh, journey. So, here we are. Please speak frankly. Uh, let us hear you out. Foreign policy is a critical public good but it's also very elusive, and we must find some common ground. Not too long ago, um, young people in Kenya were asking, why does the president of Kenya make foreign trips? Maybe an answer may be found here uh, today. Uh, we also are facing interesting uh, challenges. Uh, I am a politician, and sometimes you are inclined to try and imagine that your wish or your desire coincides with national good, and sometimes there will be at variance. But there are critical issues that we must deal with. For instance, how can we motivate our foreign service? What can we do to anchor 
good men and women out there as they work? What is a professional foreign service? Do we play the traditional game of you ignore the career foreign servant, foreign service trained diplomat, and then fill the foreign service with villagers from Mululu, where I was born? Should we, as a Kenyan people, maybe now decide whether we need to have a ratio of proportionality so that to what extent do we work with the trained people and to what extent do we infuse some new blood into a foreign service? This, this kind of balance, we've never quite talked about it. Uh, as Kenyans. Perhaps this is an opportunity. I was in Parliament a few weeks ago answering questions and uh, I'll not name the person but uh, he's a senator and uh, he told me uh, Mr. Minister can you uh, tell me or assure this house that our diplomatic service um, reflects the face of Kenya. Uh, and can you name a high-level diplomat from my, my area? I was extremely worried. I was sitting on the edge. Because that is a question we must answer and resolve today. Does our foreign service reflect the face of Kenya? How does it play out on matters gender? Does it? Now, if you want to go forward, how do we build on our consultations and find answers and practices that can be more appropriate for our people. When I talk of the budget uh, that will go as a comment that goes into the sessional paper, what happens when you do not resource a foreign service? Do you compromise a nation? Is the security of a nation under threat? Are the national interests under a threat? So these, these are the kind of issues that I really want you good men and women to help us interrogate so that we can come up with good solutions. The global trends, uh, as you've heard, are changing. We take pride in Kenya as hosting the UN system here, the largest in the global south. Today, we also take pride that Kenya is host to the largest World Bank office outside Washington. How do we leverage on that? to consolidate Kenya's position as a financial hub. And from there, springboard into providing very supportive engagements for our neighbors. So a good balance again between those kind of uh, conversations and what we are doing, I think, and many others will really help us to, to, to handle our foreign policy. And perhaps you could also tell us where you think we have been ambiguous and we need clarity. 
let it come from the citizenry that they need clarity on certain fundamental issues. Maybe this is the moment. But most important, let us all now develop a foreign policy that is Kenyan. I'm not saying that we've never had a policy. We've had it. It was even documented, as you can hear. But the new areas that we must chart is that the Constitution is very clear about public participation, public engagement, and broadening ownership. That was not there in the past, but our new constitution demands that. The 2010 constitution, they say it is transformative. If you are to ask me, uh, can you run away from the civil society? I think it's not possible anymore. If you look at the anchor around the Constitution of 2010, there's a very strong input from the civil society. So we are living in these new times, and it is absolutely important that we recognize that they're new players. Even in football, we have a season when there's Pele, then we had the Messi's of this world, and now we are looking forward to seeing other players in the arena. So in this foreign space, foreign policy space, uh, let us also crystallize on what is the gem for Kenya and how do we move forward and keep our profile where it should be. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and I wish you extremely successful deliberations, and we look forward to your inputs. Thank you so much. That is the Prime Cabinet Secretary, who is also the Cabinet Secretary for Foreign and Diaspora Affairs, and also the Acting Cabinet Secretary for the Interior and Coordination of National Government, uh, Musalia Mudavadi, was speaking at the Kenyatta International Convention Center, and this is at a public stakeholders validation forum on the review of the Kenya foreign policy. Our reporter is Nancy Okor, and she's going to be giving us full details of that in our subsequent bulletins.